Is Yahuwah's Day of Atonement in a quandary? Or is it us who are in a quandary? We hear so many times the different ideas of how to observe Day of Atonement. We've heard so many times that, oh yes, you start your Sabbath of Atonement on the sunset because Leviticus 23 says. Does it? Really? We've heard this so many times, and this little short PowerPoint was made specifically because we're trying to pare it down to make it easier to share. So I would appreciate your feedback after this and uh, help us to make it a better tool so that you can share. Is Day of Atonement in a dilemma to do or not to do? Or is Day of Atonement in a state of complexity that just doesn't ever seem to get solved. Terminology improvement. And I want to thank Jacob James for his, his uh, presentation about the name of Ethanim. I had not gone into this before, and Jacob James did a marvelous job of bringing this out, the meaning of Ethanim. So this was changed just last night, to be honest with you. And the uh, slide here says, please note, this study will not be using the Jewish name Tishri for the seventh month. Scripture has the proper Hebrew name for the seventh month recorded in 1 Kings 8, verse 2. Let's read it. And all the men of Yisrael assembled to sovereign Shalomon at the festival in the month of Ethanim, which is the seventh month. So, Jacob, thank you for bringing this out. Thank you for exposing it. I appreciate it. Ethanim, the seventh month, is what we're going to see. Atonement, the ninth at evening quandary. I say that this series of texts is one of the best witnesses there is in Scripture for the dawn start of the day. It just needs to be understood. A rev is the word we see evening in English. A rev is a mixture of light and darkness after sunset. And down below you'll see I have the words listed here. H6150, a rev, with 6148 through the idea of covering. To grow dusky, be darkened. H6151, same same letters. Somehow it's been given a different number. Commingle. Mingle and mix. Then we go to 6153 at Rev. From 6150, dusk. And going down to 6151 at Rev. From 6148, the web. Or transverse threads of a cloth. Also, a mixture, mingled people, mixed multitude. Note the base theme of this word, it's mixture. No, it does not mean when the sun is moving across the afternoon sky, as tradition would like to tell you. The word Arev means a mixture. It's very, very definitive of a highly specific time of the 24-hour period. Again, atonement. The ninth at evening quandary. After the sunset is the only, it's the one and only time frame possible for an Arev twilight mixture. Why? because darkness cannot overtake light after the direct sun rays are moved from the sky. You cannot get natural darkness before sunset. At the crucifixion, from the sixth hour to the ninth hour, there was indeed darkness. That was intervention from Yahuwah himself. Other than that, you cannot have darkness when the sun is in the sky. The sun's power, its direct rays, take precedence over the darkness. Every day and every cycle has only one Erev evening twilight. 
So the chart below has two Erev Twilight mixtures. You'll see that this is a sunset to sunset chart. We're going to be looking at this. Two Erev Twilight mixtures. And there's going to be a question here. <clears throat> it's a very important question. Which Erev mixture belongs to Ethanim 9? Is it A or is it B? If you look over here after the sunset on the left, this is the A mixture. This is where the darkness overtakes the light. 24 hours later on the right side, we have a mixture here after the sunset where the darkness takes over the light. Which one belongs to Ethanim? Which one? Or does Ethanim have two light mixtures? Will this short study supply the correct answer? Well, this is what we're going to look at. Atonement, evening quandary. In sunset tradition, as the eighth cycle closes at sunset, it brings forth the evening twilight mixture of the ninth cycle. And yes, there's question marks here. I want to know, is this right? Is this what you're thinking? Again, down here, this is the eighth. After the sunset, on this eighth light season, in sunset theory, according to the tradition, this is when the twilight mixture of the ninth starts. So when we're told that we start our Day of Atonement Sabbath at sunset, on the ninth of Ethanim, this would be where the Sabbath atonement or atonement of the Sabbath starts and where the affliction would start right here in this twilight mixture on the ninth. Let's follow this out. After sunset is the one and only position possible for an evening twilight mixture or Erev. Darkness can only overtake light after the direct sun rays are removed from the sky. So it's here at this point that Ethanim 9 begins at evening. And yes, this is according to sunset theory tradition. Is it right? So the Sabbath atonement, from what tradition tells us, would start in the twilight mixture and it would have to follow through this Ethanim night season. This would be the first 12 hours of atonement starting at evening of the ninth cycle. Please note this terminology. This would be the first 12 hours of atonement starting at evening of the ninth. Well, how many hours are there? The ninth of the month. Atonement, evening quandary. Sunset theory claims atonement begins at evening on the ninth of the month. You'll see this arrow down here. Am I emphasizing this again? Yes, I am. <laughs> because it needs to be heard. We need to be sure of what we're looking at. So there's the Arab twilight mixture. Now, if we are to complete Ethanim 9, or Tishri 9, as some people understand it, as what I used to understand it before Jacob James brought this to our attention. If we are to understand that the Sabbath of Atonement and the Affliction started here at sunset, then Ethanim 9, this would be the first 24 hours of Affliction and Shabbat. Please note the question marks over here the first 24 hours of affliction and Shabbat. Yet we haven't got to Ethanim 10 yet. We're not there yet. And we've already seen 24 hours of Shabbat. The ninth is completed now. Let's look at Ethanim 10. This is the 10th of the month. 
the atonement evening quandary. Atonement on the 10th also begins after the sunset in the evening twilight mixture. Atonement now begins the second 24-hour set of affliction and Shabbat. Where is that in Scripture? Because Ethanim 9 stops at sunset, and this is where the Erev twilight mixture of the 10th would begin. So we still need to cover Ethanim 10 night season. We have to go through this night season, and the sunrise would pass, and we would need to go through this Ethanim 10 light season. So what happens here? We have Ethanim 10. This is the second 24 hours of affliction and Shabbat. Please notice the question marks. Where in Scripture are we required to have 48 hours of atonement, Shabbat, and affliction? It's not there. But this is what happens when we are told we are to start the Day of Atonement Sabbath at sunset. So let's bring this all together onto a chart. Sunset Theory's Atonement Statute Breaker. I want you to notice on the left, this is the light season of the 8th of Ephanim. The sunset occurs, and with it comes the 9th Erev, or the twilight mixture of the 9th of Ephanim. Here's the 9th of Ephanim night season and the 9th light season. That brings us to, 24 hours later, a sunset. Your first 24 hours of atonement. After that sunset starts the 10th Erev twilight mixture. Then we come through the 10th night season and the 10th of Ethanim light season to the next sunset. So bringing this all together, this is the second 24 hours of atonement. Excuse me. Atonement starting on the 9th at evening. 48 hours of affliction and Shabbat. This is not what we read in Scripture. Does the Torah require 48 hours of affliction and atonement rest? So what's the problem? How come this is brought out this way? We're going to be looking at tradition's false afternoon evening. A dogmatic declaration by a religion based on lunar sunset theory promotes the idea of two evenings in one day. It is said that when the sun goes down, note the terminology, this is how it's, it's brought to us, when the sun goes down, notice it doesn't say anything about mixture, it's just the action of the sun going down in the afternoon, this is an Erev evening. That's what we're taught. I accepted this for many years until we started asking questions. This concept directly opposes the Hebrew definition of a mixing, the action at that time. Yes, the sun does move across the sky, there's no question of that. Yet that in itself does not provide a mixing event. It shows a location transition only, much to the opposite of what we have been taught. We have been taught that this movement of the sun going down in the sky is a rev. Well, not according to the Hebrew definitions, it's not. To declare an Erev mixing in the afternoon is an outright false declaration according to the Hebrew definitions. Yet this is how they accomplish sacrificing their animals in the same day as the statute demands. 
Without their afternoon evening, Yahuwah's statute cannot be upheld. What happens here? They destroy some statutes to uphold another. Is this confusion? Absolutely. Sorry, but Yahuwah's statutes are not a buffet option. You cannot pick and choose. He lays the statutes on the table and he says, these are my right ruling. These are my regulations to eternal life. Do you accept or do you not? So why is it that they have this afternoon in the evening or in the or sorry sorry they have this mixture in the afternoon? Well, in order to observe their sunset Sabbath, that would make the the daily sacrifice after sunset on another day. But the statutes say that the dailies, the sacrifice in the morning and the sacrifice after sunset needs to be done in the same day. So they have devised a, a format, a concept, to declare that there's an afternoon mixing or an erev in the afternoon so that they can sacrifice their animal or this is in years past and coming up they can sacrifice in the afternoon and still observe that on the same day and still have a sunset to change the day that's the the situation that they've had to solve that's why all this is done so what happens with traditions false afternoon evening let's have a look at it if you see here You'll see the false second erev, and I hope you can see my cursor. This is the false second erev. Note the positioning to where it goes. They claim that a mixture of, of what would have to be darkness overtaking light is happening right here before the sunset. This cannot physically happen. So they claim that, well, the sun going across the sky is the evening. Once again, that does not accomplish fulfilling the Hebrew definitions. But let's go with it. Let's have a look. What happens to the real evening mixture, the real twilight after the sunset? If we believe, if we accept their afternoon Erev mixture, or evening in the afternoon, if we accept that, there will be a an evening here and an evening here with a sunset to divide the two. Is that what we see? Is that the reality of our life today? Or is that simply a concept that's been shoved down our throats and that which we accept if we don't ask questions? How many times should we accept an evening before sunset? We need to question this. So this is adjusted so that they can sacrifice their animals on the same day. Now there is only 24 hours of atonement once again. Forget the Erev mixture that cannot exist before sunset and just let it be. Just accept what we are taught. Don't ask questions. Just accept it. Go with the flow. Or you can look at the Torah and ask questions. Will you agree with back-to-back -back evenings? As you were growing up, were you ever taught that the evening was before sunset? How come you accept it now? Again. We need to ask these questions. Again, tradition's false afternoon evening. Again, there's that false second rev position just before the sunset. I want you to take note here. A peculiar anomaly takes preeminence on Ethanim 9. At least that's what we're taught. Have we been conditioned to accept that darkness can overtake the direct sunlight in the afternoon before the sunset? And now the crusher, 
once per year? Why does this only happen on Ephanim 9? Why doesn't it happen on other days of the year? Now that the false afternoon evening is declared, and the Hebrew, Hebrew definitions are disregarded, it is quite simple to say this second evening in the afternoon is what starts atonement on the ninth of the month, very easily. John 7, verse 6, it comes to mind. What does it say? Yahushua said about this calendar that declares this, he said, your time is always ready. If we look at the word for ready in the Greek, it's G9022 hetoimos, and the definition is adjustable. So what we could understand Yahushua's words are, your calendar is always adjustable. It's designed how you want it to be. If it's not satisfactory to your every whim, just change it. Your time is always ready. Torah's Genesis 1, seed within a seed option. If we look at Genesis 1, verses 11 and 12, this design that Yahuwah inserted onto this earth as a requirement for what would exist on this earth, the concept there, or the ideology, is a seed within a seed. Everything must duplicate within itself from within itself. Otherwise, it's not for, for Yahuwah's kingdom. Seed within a seed. And I want to say, if anything, or if you are told anything, and that includes what I'm telling you today. If you are told anything from Scripture, take it to this seed within a seed concept and see if you can find where that seed came from. Where did this idea come from that you are being told? Did it come from man? Did it come from Babylon? Or did it come from the city of Zion, the heavenly city? For everything that's on this earth, must be seeded from the heavenly city of Zion for it to last, for it to be acceptable to Yahuwah. So what about that sunset to sunset system? Where and when was it seeded onto this earth? Well, how about this dawn to dawn option? When was it seeded onto this earth? And where was it seeded from? After the sunset on the ninth, that would be the Arev mixture, after that occurs, at this point, the affliction of your choice in observing, whatever, whatever your choice is, that is carried over the night season, leading into the light season of the tenth. So here on Ephanim 8, this is the night season. Dawn happens right here. There's the dawn mixture. And you go through Ephanim 9, late season. We are told that the affliction is to start on Ephanim 9 at evening. Here's your sunset right here. The sun goes down. And this allows the darkness to overtake the indirect rays of light. It's called soft sunlight. This is the twilight mixture. So the affliction of atonement is to begin right here. It does not say the Shabbat begins at sunset. It is the affliction only that begins at sunset. So we carry that affliction through Ephanim night season past the dawn. We're going to go and looking at that on the next slide. So here is your first 12 hours of affliction on Ephanim 9. I want to read Leviticus 23.32 for you. It, Shabbat, is a rest to you. And the next thought, and you shall afflict your beings on the ninth day of the month, 
at evening. It does not say the Shabbat starts at the ninth of evening, or at the ninth in the evening. And if you go through the passages, it references many times when the Shabbat of Atonement starts on the tenth. But here it says, you shall afflict your beings. This is your observation. Your affliction begins here. When? On the ninth day of the month at evening. Here's your evening. You're a rev mixture. The affliction begins right here. So let's continue through the night season onto the next slide. Again, this is that seed within a seed. Your affliction is carried through the night season. This is the, the dark, Ethanim 9, that's the night season. It's carried through and it enters the light season at dawn. Right here is dawn. This is the end of the end of Ethanim 9, and this is where we go into Ethanim 10, late season. This is the dawn mixture right here. The affliction is carried through the night season of the 9th and carried through the light season of the 10th of Ethanim. The affliction ends when the sun removes itself from view. Remember it says there, from even unto even. This is your second evening right here. The I should say it's the, I shouldn't say second evening because that could be confusing. It's the evening of the 10th of Ethanim. It is the evening where your affliction ends right here. The darkness is allowed to begin mixing with light right here after the sunset. This mixture, Erev, causes the affliction to end at Erev 10. The affliction. How long? From evening to evening, you observe your Shabbat. It does not say the Shabbat ends there. It says your observation on how you observe atonement. Your observation, whatever you choose that affliction to be, we are not going to dictate that to you. So what about the Shabbat of atonement? When does it end? And other questions. Is atonement Shabbat a 12-hour anomaly? Does it end with the darkness brought on by the arrival of a Rev? Or will it find linear alignment with every other cycle and Shabbat, ending at Epiphosco to grow light, as we see in Matthew 28, 1? Genesis 1, the cycles 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, they all ended at Boker, dawn's first light. Boker is where it grows light. Could this be a seed pattern? For Matthew 28, 1, remember, everything must be seeded. If Matthew 28, 1 shows us that the Sabbath ends at dawn, we need to be able to find that seed elsewhere. Well, that's what we find in Genesis 1. Matthew 3, 6 says, I change not. So let's look at Matthew 28, 1. Oops, that's for the next slide. Let's go through this one first. In Leviticus 23, 27 to 32, it speaks seven times about the Shabbat of Atonement and is referenced there in verses 27 to 32 as functioning on the 10th of the month. Did you realize that? That it's declared seven times that the Shabbat of Atonement is on the 10th of the month? If you do not see that, if you do not understand that, please read it again very, very slowly, because it is referenced seven times for the 10th of the month. So are we to think that all of a sudden, in verse 32, Yahuwah changed his mind and now it's on the 9th? No. Not when he referenced it seven times as being on the 10th of the month. 
Remember the Shabbat to keep it Kodesh. Where do we find its seed? Does this Shabbat have a night season? Because after the affliction ends here at this sunset, what about the night season of Ephanim 10? It's also an atonement Shabbat. However, the, the affliction ended at sunset, but the Shabbat did not. Or am I leading you astray? Maybe it did. What does the scripture have to say? Will the Red Sea crossing example, will that suffice for a comparison seed? Because everything must have a pattern. No, there's no anomalies in my house. The Red Seed, note the spelling, kind of a play with words here. Salvation at dawn of the seventh day Shabbat. Looking back here, the preparation night. This is the night of the Red Seed, note the words, Red Seed crossing into salvation. This was their salvation today. When did it end? The preparation ended at dawn. That was their salvation today. What was happening the next day on the Shabbat? By the way, this is your first Reference your first example of a seventh day Sabbath in the Torah beginning at dawn. What were they what was happening here when they crossed the Red Sea after the Egyptians, the Mitzrites, were taken out? The ladies were singing a song of Moshe. It was a rest. It was a seventh day Sabbath. They had just traveled for for since dawn of the day earlier. They had traveled for 24 hours. They had set up camp at the seaside. Then they had to pick up camp, and they had to travel all night long through this journey through the Red Sea. A friend of mine, Johnny and Joan, they had moved their cattle. I think it was seven miles here the other day. Johnny told me uh, we rested for the cattle at at five miles because the cattle were, t were tired. They needed a rest, so they let them rest. What about these cattle? What about the goats? What about the, all the livestock? What about the elderly? What about the ladies who were pregnant? What about the young children? They had just traveled 24 hours. Do you think they needed rest? Do you think Yahuwah had all this planned? The next morning, when they come out of the Red Sea, it was the seventh day Sabbath, and Yahuwah said, Here is your rest. This is your Sabbath. Take your rest. Do you think 12 hours was enough? No. They had a celebration rest on the seventh day Sabbath in the light season, and their physical body rest was the Shabbat that night season. They had 24 hours of rest until the next dawn. Okay, here the seed Shabbat started at dawn. But did it end at dawn too? Let's have a look. Again, no anomalies in my house. Matthew 28, 1. The end of the Shabbat. Epiphosco. As the first cycle of the week began to grow light, and we read about this in Matthew 28, 1, the seventh day Shabbat ended at dawn's light. Why do we know it ended at dawn's light? Because it says, as the end of the Sabbath began, or no, at the end of the Sabbath, as it began to grow light, the end of the Sabbath occurred as the first cycle of the week began to grow light. How do we know that? Specifically by that word epiphosco. If the Sabbath ended at sunset, that word epiphosco would be incorrect. But Yahuwah preserved that for our knowledge. The end of the Sabbath occurred just before dawn. The Shabbat according to Matthew, ended 
just before dawn. The Shabbat has a night season. Matthew has declared a Shabbat night season. Will Yahuwah accept a Kodesh appointment in the night? I thought scripture always says the Shabbat day. Shabbat day. Well, isn't the day just the light season? It's not night. Day is not night. And we read Shabbat day. What about the Shabbat night season? Here Matthew says the Shabbat ended at the if they're just at the end of the night before dawn. What about that? Is there a Shabbat night season? What does Isaiah 30 verse 29 say? Let the song be to you as in a night set apart for a festival set apart and gladness of heart as he who is going with a flute to come into the mountain of Yahuwah to the rock of Yisrael. The mountain, that's a feast. That's a Kodesh set apart appointment. The feasts and the festivals. A night set apart for a festival. Does that mean that we can't have a Shabbat in the night? Or does that give us an allowance for a Shabbat to happen through the night? A set apart Kodesh night season. The context is the mountain of set apart festivals. Did not Hasatan declare his assault on the mountain of festivals in Isaiah 14 13? How eager do you think it is for the adversary? To remove the Shabbat night season. Oh yes, your day, your Shabbat ended at sunset, and now you can do whatever you want. Is that what Yahuwah says? Or did he preserve the Shabbat night season to give our bodies also a rest? The Shabbat night season. Has Hasatan assaulted the seventh day Shabbat also? by deceiving people into a 12-hour-only Shabbat? What does the adversary say? Let me raise my throne above the stars of El. Let me sit in the Mount of Meeting, in the sides of the north. The Mount of Meeting, Har Moedim. That's the feasts of Yahuwah. The adversary declared he is going to control the feasts of Yahuwah. Is not the Shabbat, sorry, is not the Shabbat the premier flagship feast of Yahuwah? What better assault would, would the adversary think of than to disgrace the Shabbat night season? Why is it that we are taught through tradition that the Shabbat is only a 12-hour period, and that the night season is not a Shabbat. If the seventh cycle night season cannot be a Shabbat, then the ones declaring such must produce the Hebrew word Shabbat that does not consist of a cessation from work. It must be a Shabbat that is not a Shabbat. Do you get the depth of that meaning? I myself observed a Shabbat for 12 hours for four months. And I could not, after those months, I could not find anywhere a word, a Hebrew word Shabbat, that did not have the definition to cease from work. Every word that I knew of that I could see, every every resource place that I looked at, the word Shabbat meant a rest. You did not do work, normal work, on a Shabbat. So how is it? that we could read of a Shabbat night season in Scripture and declare it's not Kodesh. 
a 12 hour Shabbat late season only is not scriptural. It is deception. Without Hebrew word definition support for a non Kodesh set apart Shabbat word, it remains that the Kodesh Shabbat of atonement ends at dawn, the 11th of the seventh month. So we go through this Shabbat light season of Ephanim 10, and we go through the Shabbat night season of Ephanim 10. Our affliction has ended at this sunset, and we are now rejoicing to feel our, to realize our names are found in the book of life in this night season. It's a night of happiness. And yet, at dawn of Ephanim 11 is when the Shabbat of Ephanim 10 ends. When the Shabbat of the Day of Atonement ends, right here at this dawn. You can be fully rested at this at this point of dawn and ready to take on the new week on the first cycle. Your Shabbat of atonement ends at dawn. So if there's any questions on Day of Atonement in a quandary, you can email us at questions at studythecalendar.com. Thank you. And Shalom 